Hi guys, a little late, sorry. Okay, and I'll have to go get my tea in a minute. <laughs> so welcome to another episode of A Weed Wives Remedy. Um, we're going to continue our talk on mullen. Um, and there's my tea, so I'll be right back. There's a lot of mess behind me, so look at that. Okay, got my tea. Um, hello, hello, hello. Yeah, so Facebook, when you like stream to it, it won't let you go too late. So like, <laughs> I had to go on now. All right, so tea, very important. And very hot. So let me get, yeah. Got all the comments up and everything. There we go, awesome, okay. So yes, we're going to be talking about mullen, um, and we are on page 148 for everyone who is has the book. Um, I hope everyone is good today. I'm having a bit of a day, a bit of a week. Um, anyway. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> very appropriately, we are going to be talking about burning the candles at both ends, lymphatic and immune system. Um, so, yeah, so... Everyone, I believe, knows what just in general sort of that term name, name means. Burning the candles at both ends, which means you are stretched too thin. Um, and we do a lot of that in this day and age. Way, way too much. So, hello, Bobby. How are you doing? Having a good day. Thanks for popping in. Um, so, mullen, any part can be used internally or externally as a poultice for lymphatic stagnation. Oh, you're good, awesome. <laughs> um, especially when there are hard impacted feeling glands or a sense of having rocks rather than glands. The leaves can be simply dipped in boiling water and then cooled enough placed upon the affected area or the fresh leaves can be pounded and applied to the area as well. So that's really good. Um, and it's really easy. It sounds really easy. Um, it sounds also really good if like you have some breast issues um, and uh, to get those that lymph moving in there. Um, and you know, it sounds really pleasant actually. So that's good. For acute cases or sudden onset of severe lymphatic backup, I like to combine mullen with alder and sometimes diffuse and something diffusive such as bee balm or ginger to get it moving quickly. In the more long-term or chronic situations, I'm more likely to pair with a less cooling lymphatic such as rat root. Um, along the same lines, mullen can be very useful in the correction of long-term sore throat caused by lymphatic immunity. No, caused by, sorry, hypoimmunity and lymphatic stagnation, especially as an inf 
fusion with a small amount of sage rose. Sage rose can be added where there's a specific sense of rawness or burning. So that's real good. I am really tired today, guys. You just have to bear with me. It's been a stressful week. <clears throat> um, so, but um, just speaking about the title, Burning the Candles at Both Ends, what do you guys do um, to, um, when you're realizing that you're doing that, to sort of step back? and, um, you know, rebalance and readjust. Um, and uh, I, I run into the issue where like my schedule won't let me or, um, you know, sort of like my uh, digestive chronic illness kind of um, will just flare up unexpectedly and I have to deal with that. Um, so um, what do you guys do to sort of chill out, relax, um, and because uh, I think that's really important um, in the, you know, world. Um, so... All right. I was, I like to go to the, uh, the YMCA and go to the sauna. Um, and I would like go, uh, do a little bit of swimming. Um, like my version of swimming is like getting on some like fins and like piling around the kickboard. Um, but it's really good to get into the water. Um, you know, and uh, and then you just get into the sauna and um i really like uh, so that 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 hot dry heat just gets inside you and heals up a lot of stuff so it's really nice um you know and i'm cold from swimming and wet so like it helps with the heat um and um it just relaxes everything so you love swimming Bobby, yeah. Yeah, I do too. I'm not good at it. Hence the the assistant tools. But, um, you know, I took an adult swimming class and I wasn't able to do the stroke. But, hello, Starless Mystery. Welcome. Welcome to Book Club. If you haven't been here before, um, I, I'll be happy to sort of explain how the book club works. Um, so um, we're talking about Mullen today, uh, part two of our little Mullen discussion. And if you use Mullen in any ways, and feel free to share with us, please do. Bobby says, I miss it. I don't get to swim so much this year. No, I couldn't go either. Because um, I was like, well, I don't, you know, I go to the Y and usually it's very crowded. <laughs> so, um, you know, with COVID, it's kind of almost impossible. Um, my wish is to have like a sauna in my house where I could just go in there whenever I want, which would be really nice. Um, it's a big wish. <laughs> it's a big, it's a big wish. Um, so, um, you know, um, so right now I'm just sort of taking like a lot, a lot more showers, a lot of kind of hot showers. Um, I would take a bath, but I don't have like a bathtub, but can do that in right now. So that's also like a, like if I can't get the sauna, I would take a bathtub. Um, so but anyway, heat's really good for digestion <laughs> and it's really good. Like baths are really relaxing, but anyway, I digress. I've never used it, but I've tried to grow it before because it's beautiful, but the seeds won't come up. Hmm. So Starlight Mystery, it is possible that you do not already have it on your land. You know, sometimes you order seeds in the company Sinalzi. Hmm. Um, have you tried ordering from Horizon? They're a really good seed company. Um, but this is a plant that just 
rose everywhere. Oh, here's one. Strictly medicinal is also really good too. Um, I'll pop the links in there. Ooh. Kind of fun with tab. Oh, okay. So this is another one too that you can try. Uh, strictly medicinal. Um, yes, I love mullein. I think it grows every other. Yes, that is right. Um, so Bobby is who's going under smoky. Fantastic. Yeah, mullein is a two-year plant, so it has this little like. The first year you'll see a low like basil rosette, which is like a. Um, It's a, like a, a circle of leaves, basically, and they're all fuzzy. Um, and then the second year is when it'll send up that really big stalk. Um, last time I had a picture. Let me see if I can. Um, I wonder if you can still see me. You can. Let's see. Let's get to. Okay, so this is, I've got a picture of a basil rosette. Um, okay, hopefully you can still see me. Um, okay, let's go to share the screen. Yep. Oh, yep. Okay. Well, hold on. Here, Dan, what happened? Oh, that's really bizarre. Okay. <laughs> I guess you can see it now. Um, yeah, so that is like a first year um, Molin. Um, and, um, they're really fuzzy, soft leaves, um, and, um, let's see, oh, you're in Texas, Starlight Mysteries, yes, and it's strange here, I'm in mid-Texas, and it's warm all winter, we grow most things winter, spring, um, hmm, I wonder if mullein is something that is common, to Texas, um, I my parents live in San Marco, San Marcos. Um, I don't. I was there in like January to May. I don't know if I saw it. I would do a like a search and to see like where the plant range of mullein is, and it might not be able to grow in Texas. Um, I mean, it's a super weedy plant. It just grows everywhere. Um, although, let's see. Mullen. Growing range. Uh, yep. Where does mullein grow in the U.S.? Ooh, that is not what I was like. Oh, it's the U.S. Uh, okay. This is, I wanted just a map. Hold on. Haha. Let's see. Zones. Yes, thank you. Mullen growing zones. Um so it grows. I'm just gonna copy this to the chat. Let's see. Probably Mullen is in North Texas. 
yeah so this is oh what okay so is it biannual that grows in USDA hardness zones three through nine? It prefers full sun and dry soil. So I feel like that would be good for Texas. Mole needs space. Plant grows from six to 10 feet tall unless you you're purchase one of the new cultivars that reach only five feet. Well, we don't have to worry about that. But um, so Texas is definitely, yeah, you're in zone nine. Right. So you're just sort of on the border there. Um, so what I would do in, I don't remember when it, um, when it blooms, hold on. Cause it's real noticeable. Mullen flower. Yeah. So blooms occur from June to September. I'd say here in North Carolina, it's more closer to September that it blooms. Let me find that. Uh, um, I don't even know. I, I don't know where my picture is of the, well, that's really bizarre. Cause I had a picture of the blooming stock up yesterday, last time. Uh -huh. um, that's weird. Okay. Anyway. Um, all right, let me do a web search. It blooms at different times here. Like I have peppers growing outside right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's why I'm saying like you could definitely. So that's why it's the range. But as you probably know, it's got this really tall stalk and these really like noticeable um, uh, flowers, and that you can see like from way far away um yeah here's a big let's see if it'll do 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 uh -oh. um let's see if it'll do a different one Chrome tab. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's a little bizarre. Um, no, there we go. Okay, so you can see how ginormous it can get. Um, this is just a search for mullein flowers. Um, I can figure out how to get a bigger. I think if I do this then, yeah, okay, that's a little better. Um, but yeah, you can see this thing from the side of the highway. Um, which is real, real cool. Um, so it is possible that it is growing already close to you. Um, but I would, I would keep trying to grow it, you know, maybe get some more seeds um from one of the two companies we suggested and try like looking up its growing conditions some more and just um or you may be able to get it as a little in a little pot um i would say it's pretty hardy probably just um so alrighty. i guess we can we could probably leave that up if i saw that from the highway i would wreck it yeah, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's really dangerous. Um, driving around in the spring and um, 
anytime between like spring and like now. It's just like, oh, 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 you know. So, um, but my area is a little more biodiverse than Texas. Um, but I, when I was there, I saw um, chickweed and um, I might even saw some violets. Um, I, you know, there are plants. Rosemary grows fantastic in Texas. Um, so um, there's a really, I'm sure there's more. I wasn't there long enough. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just on the, all along the highway. It just, you can just see the stalks and they're, they're super noticeable. So now you know what to look for though. Um, and you may see it, you know, hopefully don't wreck. <laughs> okay. Um, so wait, was this, is this your first time? At, so, okay. Um, was this your first time at book club? Starless mystery. If it is, I'll just explain how it works. This is the book we're we're reading through, A Weed Wives Remedy. Um, and um, I recommend the book because it's really, really great. But um, the way the book club goes is that um, you don't necessarily have, have to have the book because we chat. It's um, every two weeks. It's uh, every other week. Sorry. It's, it's the... Uh, we have three... Lobe, Foss, Marrow, Stonebreaker, Plantain, Mockberry. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know that there's a lot in Texas. Um, so it's the second and the um, fourth Friday of each month. This month has five Fridays. but So anyway. Um, okay, cool. It's your first time. Yeah. So... Um, there's a Facebook group if you want to join and keep up with everything. I'll post when we have lives. Um, and so what happens is I just read through the book. We discuss it real slow. We we were trying to finish this book last year, but it did not happen. Um, so um, but if you have the book, you can follow along. Um, really, basically, it's sort of like there's no prep. So you just can come and hang out and we'll chat and this is you know um you know and but anyway yeah that's what that's what happens um it's kind of a slow book club because i realized i didn't have time to do much reading so um you know it's a, at least a bit of reading that i can do um beforehand or even if i can't do that um i just pop in and you know, we, we end up chatting and it really works out well. Um, sometimes there's discussion questions. Um, anyway, yeah. Oh, thanks. Sounds fun. I try. <laughs> chickweed, sal thistle, sunflower, tiger nut. Yeah. Yes. I've definitely seen chickweed there. Um, very, very much, uh, you know, of course, when it cools down, not in the height of a hundred plus degree weather in the summer. Um, but yeah, I was really, really happy to see that um just growing um of course you have um the the cedar i believe the, this or is it cypress oh my god there's a tree that everyone's allergic to anyway um so but this uh she lives in new mexico so um that's really close to Texas. Um, so it might be a good book to get um, because um, the regions are similar. Um, so Cyprus, yes, okay, yeah. Which are beautiful. Um, we have lichen in the trees here from, yeah, do you have the um, Usnia? Mm -hmm. You probably have a lot of that. Um, so, Yeah, uh, I am in uh, Western North Carolina, so um, in the mountains, that is where I am. Oh, you've never seen this book. Okay, well, there's a link in the description. Um, it's a weed wife's remedy. It's oak herbalism for the hedge wise. Um, I, you know, I, I would recommend like watching a few 
past episodes. Um, I gotta say, sometimes they're more they're better than others. <laughs> but um, and see if you um, you know um, she ha goes through a herb a chapter, and then she has some other chapters where like we're just talking about apothecary. We're talking about um, uh, sort of, uh, she's got one called Lake Bottom Luminescence of Pond Lilies Patterns in the Divergent Mind. Um, she talks about her story and how she came to herbalism and um, uh, all this stuff. So it's really good. There's a few recipes. Um, it's packed with all kinds of information. So, um, you know, it's got a little woo in there, um, because of the, the hedge wise, um, and, um, um, so, you know, um, I believe they kind of do, did you say yet yeah, what Mullen is used for? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. We have been, uh, yes. <laughs> um, so let's get back to it on that note. Um, I'm on page 149, and we're talking about um, the shepherd staff muscular skeletal system. Um, so past in this chapter, we were talking about, um, if you want to watch part one, uh, the respiratory system, um, the, uh, I'll just read real fast, the indications why you should use this plant, dry and irritated mucosi, respiratory mucosi inflammation, weakness, lymphatic stagnation, joint misalignment, um, the actions are relaxant nerving, um, it's for, it's a lymphagogue, <laughs> expectorant, vulnerary, and anti-inflammatory. Um, so, uh, you would use the root, leaf, flower, flower stalk, and resin in uh, various ways. Um, but yeah, I would, I would watch the first, uh, you know, go back and, and, um, but we are going to talk about the musculoskeletal skeletal system. Uh, she talks about the nervous system, urinary system, uh, external applications to rate. And then um, also we talk about harvest and then uh, contraindications and cautions and, you know, dosage and preparations at the end. So, um, but um, we hopefully we'll get through all that actually, because we only have like um, about 30 minutes. <laughs> so, um, okay, so the shepherd stock microskeletal system, uh, page 149. While ethnobotany and old herbalists make it clear that mullein is a very traditional remedy for troubles of this body system, it is only recently that Midwestern herbalists Matt Wood and Jim McDonald have brought it back to a well-deserved popularity for those uses. Both Jim and Matt are both well-known for their experiences with mullein as an assistant to structural alignment for all kinds from upset bones to slip discs and particularly where there is a noticeable swelling. So that's really good. I mean, hey, Heather, welcome. <laughs> You're doing well today. Oh, so that's good. A lot of people have back problems. Um, this is... This use has been proven over and over again, over by many herbalists, including myself, in both animals and in humans. For a good understanding of where it might be appropriate, think about the odd structural deformities that can occur in the va in Vascrafton's flower stalk. So in Mullen's flower stalk, the way it can look kinked and bent radically out of shape. If your spine feels like that, this is probably the remedy you need. And if the problem is neck specific, consider combining it with a bit of uh, vervain for additional alignment assistance. So if you can't go to the chiropractor or if you, um, you know, you want to try this, you can try this before you go to the chiropractor. Um, or in addition, 
to the chiropractor. Mullen reduces inflammation and pain. Um, I'm sorry, I skipped it. It's also indicated where there's a significant pain in the hips, especially upon rotating the hips inward or outward, and it feels like you have a corkscrew rather than a lower back. This sort of issue is often especially painful at night when attempting to sleep. Flower root tincture before bed and sleeping with a firm pillow between your legs will often great lessen, will often greatly lessen or altogether resolve the issue. Um, I love your kitty cats that you've been making, Heather. They are so super cute. Um, I just want to tell you that. <laughs> Mullen reduces inflammation and pain, making it a perfect herb for use where delicate, complex bones, such as the hand or feet, have been broken and cannot be set, or there are complicated alignment issues in the spine. Even in the lower spine and hips, I have noticed that it's often doubly effective in difficult, slow healing indus industry in, in, indus injuries when combined with horsetail tincture. Hmm. I wonder if like you could also combine it with com comfrey, um, which is also good for like those bones and stuff. Um, but maybe not because it's it's fast acting. I don't know. I went to join the Facebook group. Awesome, Starless Mystery. I will approve you, or um, Heather will approve you. Um, so you'll get approved <laughs> soon. Um, so cool. Um, in addition to these specific indications, mullein leaf, root, or flower is an appropriate and gentle herb for almost any ailment related to the alignment of joint, bone, or tissue. I use the salve, poultice, infusion, or tincture in any case of, okay, broken bones, sprained joints, arthritis, and chronic joint pain. While the mullein itself may not always be able to fundamentally correct such difficult issues as chronic pain, it can often offer great healing, pain relief, and ongoing assistance with the realignment process. That's really great because, um, uh, um, everyone's always looking for help with arthritis and, um, you know, chronic joint pain, all this stuff. So I bet you can combine it with, uh, comfrey, uh, for broken, help with uh, broken bones and sprained everything. Um, so, um, I would, I would love to use it for my hand right now. Uh, my hands at my job, um, I'm just doing all these re reaching and grasping and, um, it, they, I have a lot of pain just in my hands, um, because I'm not used to doing so much of that. Um, and, and it's just, it's just ache. It's, it feels bruised. Like the, it's really bizarre. Like the, in this part and then my in fingers, I thought I was like, they were all stiff. I thought I was like, I'm getting arthritis, but I think it's just real tweaked out and strained. Um, but uh, unfortunately I don't have any mullein uh, salve. So, um, and I actually don't know what part, let's see, to, she doesn't say what part you make the salve out of. Um, I have many times over, over now seen small doses, three to five drops of mullein root tincture, greatly lessen chronic achy arthritis of the hands, hips, and other achy areas. I've also found that a salve or ligament made of the same is very helpful systematically. Okay, so it's the root. And three to five drops is not a lot. Um, it is not a lot. So like usually you're using like a whole like dropper full or two or something like that. This is like boop, boop, boop. So um, yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, I think using the whole plant would be excellent. I agree, Heather. Um, do some like root and uh, leaf and flower um, salve um, or... Um, so if you're doing a tincture, you probably, you want to do those 
all separately and then you would combine it together into one because I believe that the requirements for making like a root tincture or a leaf tincture or even like a, a flower tincture would be all all different um, so unless you're doing like a, a um, folk method then you could probably stick it all together <laughs> in one jar you know um, so both ways I guess would work um, the velvet dock nervous system I guess maybe I will take this I guess I could leave this on I don't think it no all right we're gonna take this off now um we can put back on um, um. oh I didn't there we go let's see what else we got Ah, we'll put back on my picture. <laughs> I wonder if you can get pollen from the mullein flowers lately. I've been really getting into using pollen. I don't see why you couldn't. Some flowers is easy to get, some are not. Yeah, so the mullein flower is really tiny. Um, and I bet you would have to like have a bunch of plants so that you could collect a bunch at one time or what you would do if you wanted to make a tincture you would like start with as much as you can get and like keep adding over time um i'm sure the flower stalks bloom very randomly yes exactly that's that's what i was trying to say and i've seen them uh bloom very randomly so um you know i think you would have to I guess I collect them sort of slowly, um, you know, just keep putting more in your jar. Um, uh, I find the flower, so we're on page 150. I find the flowers best for acute pain, for a recent injury, or a severe flare up of a chronic injury is most often appropriate where there's overwhelming, usually sharp or burning pain, especially in the joints spine, including neck, and locations of old breaks in the bone. The flower provides a sense of calm, peaceful well-being, and is particularly indicated where severe severe pain is causing a sense of darkness, depression, or hopelessness. So it sounds like a little flower essence is going on. Um, every day collect what you can. Yeah, then try it. Yeah, so yeah, you would collect however much you feel like is enough if you're making like a tincture, and then you just sort of you know, leave it, leave all of it in there for uh, the six weeks. Um, same if you're making like an infused oil, but that might be difficult because it's a fresh flower and it could mold. Um, so I'm not sure unless you like kept like a, I'm not sure how that would work. Um, oh, sorry guys, my stomach is not. He's not having a good day at all. Uh, I'm having a rough couple of days. Just yesterday was better. Today, I don't even know. Hello, Darcy. How are you? It tries and it's good for yours. Oh, the. The flower. I bet. I guess you could dry like the whole stalk with the flower on it. Uh, so I haven't actually made anything with the mullen. Um, so these are all like good questions. <laughs> um, um, so we're on page 150 um, for Darcy, um, if you have the book, not welcome. We are talking about Mullen today. This is part two of our Mullen discussion. 
Um, so the roots seem better for chronic pain, especially in relation to joint problems, old injuries, and arthritis that feel achy and bone deep. Hard swellings with pain in either ac acute or chronic cases are a specific indication for Molin. It also provides grounding where the pain threatens to unglue us or send us spiraling out of our bodies to treat from the incessant pressure of constant pain. Oh yeah. I know, Heather, it's... Yeah, it's tough. It's been, it's been tough. Stress. Uh, so some plant pollen is very sticky and you can't tap it out onto your hand. Yeah, I wonder if she's going to talk about the pollen. Um, let me see. The flowers can be challenged. The flowers being small and deeply set into the stalks can be challenging and time consuming to harvest. Some people prefer to harvest the whole stalk while others painstakingly pluck each flower from the in fuzzy home does not talk about pollen so um you may have to i would see if you can look that up or find it um from some reputable source on the old internet or um hmm. Hmm. plants like Fennel, cattail, or dill pollen, or even pine pollen is easy to collect. Yeah, I can see why uh, the cattail, the pine, um, that's cool that you're so into, into pollen. Let's see. Um, uh, Oh, this is um. So this is just about like. Hmm. This is I. I was like bold pollen, but it's just talking about allergies. So. Um. But, so here's a, an article by Mother Earth Living, just about Mullen, and maybe it'll have more information. Um, okay. Um, but, uh, I have to order some more seeds. I need some for this. For that she's talking about dry and inflamed nasal passage. Yeah. Mo oh, here Heather had put it up. <laughs> Mullen produces generous amounts of pollen and nectar in, it, in its flowers in midsummer. During a bit of a during a bit of a blooming lull, bees and flies are that collect and or eat pollen nectar love flowers. Okay, thank you so much, Heather. Um, I, you know, Heather is so good at the research. Um, right. Right, Heather. It just, it just says it produces lots. Yes, Sarah's mystery. Um, it, it does seem like po pollen is definitely more unexplained. Oh, really? You started doing it because of a woman you met in Peru. That's so awesome. 
Um, well, I think most of the pollen people are like familiar with now is the bee pollen. Um, you know, um, but it's definitely still one of those, um, I guess people don't, yeah. I think it's sort of on the edges, so it might be harder to find more information, but it, if you were still in contact with her in Peru, um, I don't know if you are, but um, sounds like a good good place to start, um, seeing if you can ask about that or um, even look up more information about like Peru and plant pollen use or something, maybe you would find something. Um, I'm really not sure, but that sounds really interesting. Um, and there's definitely information about it. Um, um, just offhand, I can't, I can't think of any other. Uh, so, um, let's see, both flower and you can be, root can be useful in the treatment of nerve damage or pain that directly stems from or relates to a broken bone or misaligned joint such as many cases of sciatica. They were used to be, there used to be a chef in Georgia that made a vegetable plate with 10 kinds of culinary pollen. Wow, I tried forever to find him and find out what 10 he used. He retired and never reached him. That's, that's really, that's unfortunate. Um, perhaps then just a Google search on culinary pollens um, might, point you in a direction uh, in general. Um, uh, I usually combined it with a more directly nerve associated herb like skullcop or vervain for such an application. So the flower is the strongest relaxant nervine for both, but both the root and the leaf also has noticeable relaxant qualities. Although they affect different people to various degrees, for some, the leaf infusion with its slightly odd but nutty flavor is quite enough to send them for a long nap, while others feel only a vague, calming impression from the draft. Uh, you might be the one to bring mole and pollen into the spotlight, Christy. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> um... All right, we're just gonna run through this. Uh, the wild ice leaf for the urinary system. Uh, the uh, mullein root will be found useful for incontinence due to chronic cystitis, especially when combined with an appropriate mucous membrane tonic. It's very specific to case adult incontinence, childhood bedwetting as a result of a weak tr trigon muscle. Uh, bee pollen is from flower, yeah. But like, they get it from many different flowers. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, it's not a specific one, which which is so you would be like doing more specific, which would be cool. Um, and then the bees, I guess they do something with it um they, i think they mix it with honey so like i really don't know um i know it has to be different than when you just get it from the flower instead of just from the bees who got it from the flower um uh in fact i consider it worth trying in any bed with wedding situation not clearly related to emotional trauma and or sexual abuse Michael Moore says that the root is also a diuretic and urinary tract astringent. One half teaspoon to one fourth cap of water drunk before retiring will increase the tone of the this triangular base of the bladder and aid in preventing bedwetting or incontinence. And it is frequently useful for prostate inflammation or simply urethral in or in irritation in both sexes following uh, sexual 
something. <laughs> oh, they mix it with the saliva. Okay. Thank you, Heather. Yes. Calisthenics. As far as pollen research for human use, it's just really just unexplored. Have you tried searching PubMed? Uh, that is the place where all the herbal uh, research is done. Um, so if something has been done, uh, like a scientific study that's been done on a plant, You can look it up here. And it's throughout the whole world. Um, uh, because we don't have, you know, if they did a study and they've done an article about it, I think you should be able to search. Um, look at this. Introduction of South African SARS-CoV-2 variant into the, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Um because uh, the United States is not doing a lot of this research. Anyway, just another uh, resource there. Oh, my gosh. All right. So, um, in light of time... Um, I'm going to read uh, external applications and then the last page. Um, I'm just going to be a tiny bit. Um, so, mullein is an ancient wound herb and soothes inflammation and pain while preventing infection, reducing swelling, and aligning tissue for the best possible healing. It is specifically indicated where a hard swelling of some kind or where there is a jagged wound, unlikely to knit back together without significant scarring. Saps can be made from just leaves, just flowers, or some combination of root leaves or flowers, depending on the need. Tincture plant can be indicated in ligaments for chronic or acute pain related to muscular stress or damage, in addition to its use as a ligament for broken bones, misalignment joint or joint damage, pain. So a, a ligament is, you wouldn't ingest it, just sort of topical um and it's made you can make it from like rubbing out you know different alcohol or i think you can do it in vinegar you can rub it in, you know, eat um for use on s slipped or bulging discs where there is sharp pain or burning consider combining mullein flower tincture with choke cherry and rose tincture for a more effective blend um, okay, so harvest. Mullen is a biannual, having a basal rosette of leaves the first year and sending a tall flower stalk up in the second year before producing seed and subsequently dying. Roots and leaves are best harvested in the autumn of the first year or spring of the second. Most people prefer to gather leaves before the plant flowers, but some herbalists such as Jim McDonald feel that the leaves, the flowering stalk may have properties especially useful to issues relating to spinal and other alignment issues. In either case, care should be taken to harvest only vibrantly green and healthy leaves and to abstain from any yellow, thin, or aging leaves. The flower being small and deeply set into the stalk can be challenging and time consuming to harvest. Some people prefer to harvest the whole stalk while others painstakingly pluck each flower from its fuzzy home and then dosage tincture oil or effusion of all or any parts is useful depending on the situation mullein tends to be fairly low dose herb it is safe in nearly any quantity but it is strong enough that most adults only require a three to seven drops a few times a day of tincture so that's for a low dose uh no caution Cautions and indications, none, except the chance of contact dermatitis caused with those fuzzy little hairs. The name Quake, Quaker's Rouge is an allusion to the use of the hairs by young girls to make their cheeks rosy, which work because of the irritating hairs 
this is also why I don't recommend using woolen leaf as toilet paper because of some sensitive individual rash and certain discomfort can occur. Also, if you use it as a tea, you need to strain it really well because of the little hairs. And I think also the tincture. So just make sure you're using like, like a muslin cloth to strain it. You might even want to strain it a couple times um because those are irritating i don't like being plucked from my fuzzy home no i don't either okay cool so i want to thank everyone for coming today um the next one we're going to do is talk about clematis which is something i definitely have not used before and we'll have to look up what it looks like it's a very short chapter um, and then after that is the Witch of the Edge of the Woods, Introversion and Otherness in Hedgewise. So that sounds really cool and interesting. Um, we're almost done. Woohoo! Um, double up on your straining fabrics. Yeah. <laughs> or do it twice. Or um, just, yeah, just because of the little hairs. So we'll pick up on the um the so the second is the 12th of february same time sorry i was late but saw instagram post and hope to catch you all love clematis i need to get this book oh awesome well please join us next time darcy um and i'll i'll post of course um and this is the book. The link is in the description. Um, you know, it's an Amazon link, but you could probably find it other places. Um, you can order from her website, I think. It's a little bit crazy because they do, I think they do like low run publishing. Um, so, um, but it's a really great, it's a really great book. Um, yeah, yes, Heather is right. It's a fab book. Um, totally worth it. Um, yeah, I mean, I have, Need all kinds of all kinds of notes and everything and yeah <laughs> um, so um, yeah it doesn't have any pictures it's just got little chapter headings and and things um, but it's 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 real great um, so she just really. Not only she just talks about the plants, but she really talks about her experiences with them and her journey to be working with them as well. And I think that's really cool. Um, so it's dense at times. There's a whole lot of information. Um, and uh, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes like all her books, there's a little bit of things that are left out that you're like, well, I don't quite understand how she's doing that. Or so sometimes you have to look up other books, more information in other books, but I think it's really good. Um, and I think it's a good book for like anyone sort of starting out as well. So, all right. Well, guys, um, I will see you next time. And um, I'm going to go have to look up Clematis um, <laughs> and get my pictures ready. Uh, for next time so um, but um, I hope you guys have a lovely uh, Friday um, and weekend and the rest of the time until I see you and um, all right talk to you later Bye. oh um, and this is streaming live from the Facebook group you can watch it on the Facebook group or you can watch it on my CUO herbs and tarot YouTube channel so it's in both places um, anyway so 